Good evening, family. I'm back earlier. You know I was having some difficulties. The enemy was mad because I wanted to talk with you guys. But I am back on. Like I said, I have a word. And the title is Watch What You Say. Watch what you say. Watch what you say. Um, like I said to you earlier this morning, you know, we're going to talk because there's a lot going on. It's a lot going on. But um, God is faithful. God loves us. And for the believers, like I said earlier, you shouldn't even be shocked at all. Because he said it in his word that these were the type of times that um, we would definitely be living in. Amen. So watch what you say. Um, I am on fire. I'm serious. I, I just been falling with this word. So pray for me and um we're gonna get through this and I ain't gonna hold y'all hash this too long. Amen. But you know how I get, so just pray for me. So first go with me to um our key scripture tonight. Go with me to Proverbs chapter we're gonna look at two scriptures. Go with me to Proverbs chapter 13, verse 3 first. We're going to look at that one first. Proverbs chapter, I'm going to get it. Proverbs chapter 13. Give me one second, family. I'm trying to hold up and fix y'all a little bit. All right. All right, Proverbs chapter 13, verse 3. This is the Amplified Version, <clears throat> excuse me, that I got it in. Um, trying to... Okay, Proverbs chapter 13, verse 3. Let me get to an Amplified Version. It says, the one who guards his mouth, thinking before he speaks, protects his life. The one who opens his lips wide and chatters without thinking, comes to ruin. I'm going to read that again. Proverbs chapter 13, verse 3. This is the Amplified Version. The one who guards his mouth, thinking before he speaks, protects his life. The one who opens his lips wide and chatters without thinking, comes to ruin. Tonight, topic for tonight is watch what you say. But let us pray first. Heavenly Father, I come to you tonight with my social media family, Lord God. I thank you, Lord God, for each and every life that is connected to me through social media in the name of Jesus. Lord, I thank you first and foremost for this day, a day that none of us have never seen. I thank you for being so mindful with new grace and mercy over your people, over everyone, letting us be a part of this day in the name of dispatch before we even woke up to this day to protect, defend, and preserve us, our families, and our children, Lord God. I thank you for letting them guide us in every problem that we face and every decision we have to make today in the name of Jesus. Lord, I thank you for your grace and your mercy. Lord God, as we journey through this, Lord God, Give us, speak through this word today that you've given me, Lord God, to share with my social media family at a time as this, basically to just watch what we say in the name of Jesus. So we decrease, Lord God, we open ourselves up now. We have prepared our spiritual womb to receive you. And I give you all the honor and the glory for it in Jesus name. Amen. Watch what you say. Now, you know, our words carry enormous weight. All right, here we go. But we're going to talk right through this because you know it was nothing but the devil that paused my video. But anyway, I love y'all and we're going to get to it. Like I said, you know, our words carry enormous weight. More than we sometimes think, they often impact some people for decades, providing the courage to press on or more reason to give up. You know the saying, sticks and stones may break my bones, but words will never hurt me. You know, this is a frequently heard phrase when we were kids, something that sounds really catchy and it helps us to shrudge off mean words that may be careless, carelessly hurled at us. But let's discuss how we use words the, because there is a correct way and an incorrect way on using words. 
When you use words incorrectly, words sting. They slice like a knife and only the wounds are inside and there isn't any bandage or ointment that you can apply to make it feel better. We've read um, our key scripture, Proverbs 13, 3. The Lord says, the one who guards his mouth thinking before he speaks protects his life. The one who opens his lips wide and chatters without thinking comes to ruin. Real basic, real simple. Um, I've come to you tonight to let you know, despite of all this, what's going on in the world today. We got a lot going on. It's a lot going on. It's a lot going on. And I understand um, people of God. Um, just give me one second, family. I just came on tonight to encourage you that, and first of all, first and foremost, we're not of the world. We just passing through. What's going on should not be a shocker, but hear me clearly, as I said er earlier, um, it does saddens me to hear all the violence. It does saddens me to see all this, you know, we got right, I mean, it, it, it's just a hot mess all over the world, all over cultures. And it breaks my heart that, you know, life could be so much better if you just trust God. Keeping it real simple, keeping it real simple. But to the people of God, I encourage you tonight that we have to stick together. You have to learn to be unified no matter what. Um, and one thing that uh, my pastor spoke on yesterday in her sermon, even though it's been a musical summer around uh, messages that she's been given um, these over the summer. And one thing she spoke from her sermon that stuck with me, which was entitled Boys to Men, was it's time to put away childish things. There are some things that have, we have to just grow up on, even as adults. Because sometimes as adults, we think we know it all and we don't. But there are some things that um, you just going to have to stop. It, 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 it got to it gotta stop. It just got to stop. And then you have to own up to your stuff. God gave me, I'm going to share this with you, being transparent. And then I want to take you to another scripture that he dropped. Um, the transparent thought, the Lord shared with me um, Sunday morning. We talked about adversity trials and tribulations uh these past couple of weeks um myself and my family it's been very we've been you know it's just been different because we're coming up on the third year on august 23rd of the passing of my sister and um it's very different because we were you know my family the we're close but it's just it's different it's very different and for me personally, uh, because we were very close and she was my number one cheerleader. And um, there has been some things and some personal things I've been going through that I just was like, you know, who am I going to talk to? Who am I going to turn to? And I miss my sister. And that's natural, you know, uh, because we were close. But when I asked God about, you know, it's just so much, you know, I understand because you already told us from the beginning that perilous times will come. Men will become our lovers of friends. People going to turn. Family members going to turn. It's going to be violence and chaos. You said that. I got that. I said, but for your people, you know, God, I said, um, how can we really look at this? So it, he dropped it in my spirit. You can look at adversity two ways. You can look at your trials. You can look at adversity, trial, trip, whatever you want to call it. You can look at the seasons you're in, the tough times you go through two ways you can look at it as a hindrance or you can look at it as an opportunity now i was like okay he said now regardless regardless of what it is you can look at it as a hindrance or you can look at it as an opportunity i know i'm not trying to sound cold but i'm just saying this was with, with for me even though i'm going through this you know because i miss my sister so i looked at it he was like, you already know. You already know because you are a child of man. You already know that life will happen and death will happen. And it will happen on my clock. I say, <laughs> you know, I have the final say. I said, yes, God, you did. He said, so you can sit here 
You can take all of this. You can let this stop you from what you already know that we've discussed, that you already know the plans and the things that I've, that I've shown you, that I've given you a sneak peek of your future. And you can sit here and wallow in this. And, you know, for however long you choose to, because I gave you that freedom of choice. So you're going to have to come to a point when you won't have to move on. So if this is going to stop you, you know, then that's on you. But you can look at this as an opportunity because even though this is hurting you and God told me I will never hurt you because I love you. But whatever, but because of the consequences and the choices or things that just happened to us, you know, because there are things that happened that we didn't ask for, you know, and sometimes we always get blind, you know, sided with seasons, you know, rough seasons. I got that. But God said it is our point of view and how we respond and how we can act and how we can allow it to be in our lives. He said, take this as an opportunity for you spiritually to grow because spiritual maturity is taking place. So I said, OK, so even through death, he said, I'm maturing you up because, yes, I am. I'm going to always experience the death of a loved one because people come in, comes in and out our lives and it's up to us and like he said it's up to me on how close they get because we all you know we put people in categories it's how it's, it's all based on how much time you spend with them and which is true because not only you know right now because of the loss of my sister but I've lost two good uh, family friends and I lost a mentee so I, I was like okay God I understand he said but from this, he said, don't let this stop. He said, because you're with me and I would never put more on you than you can bear. Don't let this clog you up and stop you. Because really, when y'all with the people that we were connected to, like my sister, she wouldn't want that. I know she wouldn't. I know she wouldn't want me sitting home being depressed and crying all the time and just letting myself go. Because I know how she was on, you know, when she was alive. She would not want that. She wasn't even that type of person. So I had to decide, you know, this year, this when this started to come on me, you know, because we and my family, yes, we go through depression and we definitely have the anger monster we fight. Amen. But um, to wrap this up, because I want us to go to another scripture, but I just wanted to share that when God told me how we can, how I can look at adversity, you can look at it as an as a hindrance or an opportunity. And when, when you go through your seasons, and sometimes, of course, God will allow you, you have to go through seasons. He said trials and tribulations will come. And when they do come, look at it as a hindrance or you can look at it as an opportunity. And really, if you look at it as an opportunity, basically, it's an opportunity for you to grow and to move past it. We choose how long the storm can stay. If you really think about it, you have a choice on how long you're going to sit in that storm. You can change your life by your thoughts because it starts here. Amen. You know, it's how you view things. I mean, yes, we, we all grow up in an environment and we're taught certain things. And then once you become of age to accountability, now you got some choices. Now you have time. Now you can decide from right or wrong. Amen. Now you have you have an opportunity to look at even what's going on in the world and your community around you and how you're going to perceive it and what you can do. But it has to start within you. And number one, even when it's starting within you, you got to be real. Amen. You know, you got to call a spade a spade a jack a jack and stop playing with what's in you. Because people of God, we have the goods, especially people of God. We walk with God. And we have to be the light. We are the ambassadors of God. We represent him. We are royalty. We have to show what royalty look like. You ain't got to go out here thinking you're going to save the world. Jesus done did that. <laughs> that's too much. I'm so glad he did it. Amen. You know, that's a lot of work. You know, he saved the world. He did, he did that. He died. He did it. And I'm so happy. It is our job within our community, within our family. To, to raise the bar, to set the standard, and don't be wavered. Because if God said it, then it is so. 
Amen. Now go with me real quick to um I want to read this one uh back to James because we was in James when I did silence. So I had to go back to James. Go with me to um James chapter one. I'm pulling it up on my other Lord thing too. We're going to James chapter one. I said, I mean, God is just wonderful family. I, I, he, he really is. He, and um, no matter what, you got to stop being so distracted and stay focused. Just stay focused. Go with me to James chapter one, verse two. We're going to go from, wait a minute. We're going from two. We're gonna we're gonna go through two through eighteen, but we're not gonna I'm not gonna do the whole thing. But I, I'm gonna just pick some script. I, I mean, he was just dropping it, drop, and I was like, I, I gotta share this. I, I say, okay, go to James chapter one verse two. I'm gonna read from the New Living Translation, y'all. I'm getting hooked on that. I like the other, but this New Living Translation is really putting it to it. Um, starting with two. I said it before. Some of those who didn't see the last video, we did James. We did part of James, but we had to come. I had to come back to it. God told me to come back, but this is good. I get excited. Bear with me. James chapter one, verse two through eighteen. It says in the New Living Translation, "Dear brothers and sisters, when troubles of any kind come your way, consider and." I just said it. Consider it an opportunity for great joy. For you know that when your faith is tested, your endurance has a chance to grow. So let it grow. For your endurance, for when your endurance is fully developed, you will be perfect and complete, needing nothing. If you need wisdom, ask our generous God and he will give it to you. He will not rebuke you for asking. But when you ask him, be sure that your faith is in God alone. Oh, I got, and, it's, and then it says, do not waver for a person with divided loyalty is as unsubtle as a wave of the sea that is blown and tossed by the wind. Such people should not expect to receive anything from the Lord. Their loyalty is divided between God and the world and they are unstable in everything that they do. How, I got to read that again. That done hit here. Oh, let me calm down. That was at six. Verse six says, but. When you ask him, be sure that your faith is in God alone. That's that's enough right there. Anything that you want from God. I just read it. If you need wisdom, anything. But you make sure that your faith is in God, that you believe God. <laughs> Keep it real simple. You can't ask God for nothing and don't believe him. Or you, it says, and also it says, you can't have divided loyalty. Don't be asking God something and then go run into the world. Don't You can't be jumping between God and Satan. It's either you're going to serve God or you're going to serve the devil. Either you're going to be with God or you're going to be in the world. So it's time for you to make a stand. It's time for us to choose a side. Now, but at the same time, this is dealing with our, you know, I kind of jumped around because I was talking about uh, adversity. But at the same time, through all of this, you still have to watch what you say. Say what you mean and mean what you say. Because guess what? Even when you're asking, you have to say what you mean and mean what you say. You know, and your heart needs to be right in asking God knows when we when they're double when you're double minded or you have divided loyalties, and God is not going to be pimped, so you better come correct. He is too good of a God. You ain't got to play with him. All you got to do is just believe. Amen. And he said it because he says such people should not. If you if you are a two faced person. And you trying to pray and ask God for something. He said it in his word in seven. He said people that have divided loyalty, they happen around one minute. They want to be with God and the next minute they ain't. He said it right there. He said such people should not expect to receive anything from the Lord. Their loyalty is divided between God and the world and they are unstable in everything that they did. Amen. I ain't right that God read. I, and, and this is awesome. 
because they put it plain and simple, you know, because we, and, and it goes with, of course, what's going on out here now. People of God, if you're for God, you're for God. We have to, God told me to tell y'all what we need to do. You need to be quiet. You need to be still. You need to be in position and keep your eyes on me. That's it. And then, you know, and, and what I'm saying is, I'm not saying that um, you just supposed to be, well, me, myself. And, no, I'm talking about, I'm talking to the people in the body of Christ. We're going to stay unified. We're going to continue to uplift. That's what God wanted. But when it, when you're dealing with the world, you don't be, you shouldn't be, oh my goodness. Oh Lord, this is going on. Oh, the God, you know what? God said, get in position. And what's the position? That get in position. And some of you, and I'm gonna be honest, and you know, some of y'all may take it the wrong way, but God said I can see it. You know, some of y'all are saying, you know, you're running your mouths about um, you're putting your mouth on the situation, on the problems of the world when they really the people of the world, especially people who don't know God, you know. You need to continue to let yourself, whomever you cross, to be a light for them. Don't put your mouth on them. Pray for them. They need prayer. The world need prayer. Like, it, I mean, I'm telling you, like, it's about to go, because it is, it is rough out here. It's vicious out here. And um, especially the political leaders and the president of the United States, they need prayer. Bad. And we're going to pray for them before I get off. Oh, yes, we are. We're going to pray for them. And then after we pray and we petition, we're going to continue to do our part, what God put in us to do, and let God handle it because he will fight. Don't think, don't let the world trip you up, family, because of what's going on and thinking God sleep. God ain't sleep. He told me he see everything. Yes, and our humanness, it is so shocking. And it's like, and yes, and I told him, I'm like, God, this is just great. I mean, it was just having me cringe and cry. And so that's why I have to balance myself because I can't watch the news too much. I'm telling you, it'll just take me and my mind all over the place. So I just watch the news and I read the paper to be informed. And then I got to pray and put that thing, God handle it. And every time I say, he, and he handles it. He will handle it. But at the same time, we have to be still get in position, pray, and continue to be excellent, effective representatives of him. Amen. So I encourage you tonight, even within your seasons, you got two ways to look at it. You can let it be a hindrance or you can let it be an opportunity. I encourage you to let, no matter what you're going through, be an opportunity for you to get better, you know. And don't be so distracted because that's what the enemy wants. He's on his job. He on his job big time. But you don't take your eye off of what God has told you to do and what God is preparing you to do, what he's doing for your family. He, his, he said it in his word, you know, that he will never put more on us than we can bear. The fight is his, you know. <laughs> The fight is his. He knows what's going on. And it's in, and see, as believers, we also have to understand and be mindful of the fact that his timing is not our timing. It's not. I, I'm sorry. That's a hard pill because I want, I want this violence and this stuff to stop like right now. I'm like, God, come, you, this just got to stop right now. But then he reminds me the clock that I see down here the time that we work on he don't work on that but when he when we call upon him if, if when he crosses the he when he puts the blessings and he helps us y'all know it's right on time it's right on time but even though in our humanness and the time that we're going through on earth sometimes it's short when he moves and then sometimes it's, you know it's long compared to our calendar so i just encourage you a family when you get weary and yes you know you're gonna have to balance it out you watch what's going on in the world and you 
you know, just to be informed. You continue to do your part within yourself first. It starts with you first inwardly, then it works outwardly. If you're not honest inwardly, you can't do nothing for your family or your community, you know, because, and my pastor spoke upon that, which is so true. And I believe that, you know, you, you can't help me. If you jacked up and you won't admit that you jacked up and you won't even acknowledge the problem and just be like, oh, it'll go away. It's not going to go away. Deal with it or it's going to deal with you. Amen. It's going to deal with you. And also, um, wait a minute. I wanted to share um, far as another scripture. Y'all, I got so much stuff. See, y'all better pray, pre pray for me to get all this in order because I just get so excited. And I'm telling y'all, got so much I want to share with y'all. And God is like, he, he said to me, look, get and give my word. You know, like, Jesus, he's just, I mean, he's just so good. He's such a good God. And I just really want um to encourage you and to uh, help you to understand how wonderful of a God that we serve. You know, we ain't going through all this for nothing, family. He is up to something big. And to me, and I'm a, you know, this is my this is my opinion. As hurtful, you know, it's like the more violence, the more outbreaks, everything. I mean, it's going to the height of heights. Let's look at it like that. Let me let's look at it like this. The degree. The, the 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 degree level of sin and just ugliness in the world trust me will never supersede the goodness that's about to come it'll never right now god all of this what's going on around us and in us is to spiritually mature us because when he's ready to do what he's going to do Number one, we're going to get out of his way. And number two, you should be in position to receive your blessing and to be elevated. But if you all distracted and if you all got your eyes and all in the business of the world and other people business and you ain't even handling your business, you going to miss you going to miss your blessings. And guess what? You can't blame nobody but you because you wasn't ready. You got to keep your heart right. And, you know, the mind is the devil's playground. Keep your mind cleared. Renew your mind daily. The Bible says that we have to renew this mind. You gotta watch what you gotta watch what's in your eye, what, what you see. You gotta watch what you hear, and you gotta watch what you say. Amen. Watch what you say. This, this, this right here is the most deadliest weapon on this earth, and that is word. And the best way you watch what you say, you have to be honest about what's in here and what's in here. Because when it enters here, it goes to here. And when it hit here, it's coming out here. And then once, this is like a gun. Once you shoot it and the, and the bullet, you know, the word is shot out, you can't pull it back. It's out. And it's going to hit. It's going to hit somebody or something. You know. And the word says, power, life and death is in the tongue. Stop speaking death. Stop being all scared. And, oh, you speak life. I know it's hard. You speak healing. You speak restoration. You pray for the world and these leaders and these government officials and the ones that are making the decisions that will affect all of us. You know, you got to speak over them. I know it's hard because it's the battle of the spirit and the flesh, you know. And that's, if you want to keep it real 100, you know, I don't even know how some of these leaders got to be leaders. But, whoo, that's why we need Jesus. So I, I, I told God, I was like, I, I, my mind can't even fathom, like, how, how did we get here? But then again, with the devil being here and we fall into temptation and sin, and of course the sin level is up and it, it gets higher and higher. And if and, and a, especially a life without God, <laughs> we here. And one thing God said to me, you know, with him giving us freedom of choice, he will always respect what you do. He will never try to bully you to come to him. 
He's not going to um, force you. He wants you to make a choice. Because guess what? Look at our relationships with each other. I, I don't want to bully my friends and my girlfriends to be my friends or try to make them be my friends. Amen. That's crazy. You know, when it's when you have that freedom of choice and you're willingly wanting to um, be in the presence of someone, it makes the relationship more valuable. So I encourage you, uh, family, to really um, strengthen your relationship with God. And he does talk. But when you go to him, you have to be still. You have to humble. You have to quiet the noise in your mind. All that gook from, you know, today's work and, you know, some of us work. You have to get to a place where you got to strip your mind empty and, and then just turn your ears off. That's what I do. Just turn your ears off and you got to get that, got, you know, get that nice, smooth, soothing, you know, gospel music and i'm telling you the holy spirit will come up next to you sit right up beside you and he will tell you some things baby and you will be so empowered like wow see we can't hear god when it's a lot of hustling bustling going on when your insides and your emotions is all over the place and your mind all over the place because of our flesh because it's a daily fight let's keep that real I know I'm crazy. I y'all know I done told y'all. It take y'all think. <laughs> Some people they think because they did. I had somebody, you know, you know, they think that uh seemed like it's easy for me. Somebody inboxed me. I was like, nah, I go through a lot in the morning. You know, me and God go through a lot. And I'm grateful I'm going through it with him, you know, to get me to do and stay in alignment. It's tough. Because a lot of things, if we be real, we've living out of our our past experience. And a lot of things that's in us, it's going to take a minute to get up out of us. But I promise you, if you just keep in mind that thou is with thee, you know, it's going to make it easier and easier for you to keep moving forward. Just keep your focus on God. And even when the devils want to throw distractions in your way, you got to bind that up in the name of Jesus. Don't magnify what he does because you know you know your stuff and you know when he's trying to stop you and even in your worstest of seasons and when you feel like you can't hear God that's when you that's tall tale sign you got to get still because people say I've been praying and I ain't been hearing God because you too loud <laughs> and I, I say he told me that and I got a big mouth I was like God I, I, I feel like I ain't, I, I ain't been hearing you and then one day I came to, um, one day, one Sunday at church, I got to the altar and I was telling him again. He said, I've been talking all week long. You know why you couldn't hear me? Because and you, you, you loud. Your anxieties are loud. The stuff that you had in your head is louder than you can hear my voice. The stuff that is in you, that, that garbage, that gook that got to come out is louder than my voice. That's why you couldn't hear me. Your eyes wandering and being distracted is you done magnify that so big. That's why you can't see me or feel me or believe me because you too loud. You too loud. Be still and know that I am God. He said in his word, my favorite scripture, Isaiah 4, that's my core scripture, Isaiah 41, 10. Do not fear. When you with me, he said, do not fear. I'm with you. Do not be afraid because I am your God. I will strengthen you and help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. No matter what. That's it right there. So it's no matter what you go through. You know, yeah, in your flesh, you get nervous. But you keep you, if you always have it in your mind that thou is with thee, you can overcome anything. But most importantly, if you can get this under control, you can get this under control. Some of y'all need to stop, even with y'all posts. Not saying, you know, I know the, my personal family, but for real, people, some of y'all on face, y'all need to stop with this post and magnifying the problem bigger than what it is. Don't add to it. 
Do something about it within you and your community first. Do what God tell you to do. Trust me, he got it. He got the whole world in his hand. Do you understand what I'm saying? He got it. We have to, as people of God, let God be God and we be his servants as his kids. He got his business and we got our business. <laughs> for real. God told me, because I used to get in trouble for that, trying to help God out and stepping ahead of God and all this and all that. So I'm trying to tell y'all, you when you do, when you have a relationship with God, see, you'll know these things and the way that you'll know him because you'll always learn something new about him in each season of your life. But when we are out here and when God brings people into your life, pay attention and listen to what your part is in that person's life. Don't be trying to do no extras. Don't be trying to do all this extra stuff to help folks or do this. It's a part, all of us. You people are in your life for a reason, a season, or a lifetime. You will have connection, knittings, and crossings. You know what I'm saying? You'll have crossings, connections, and knittings. That's how I go. So those are the three. When you have people, when you are connected with people, don't be doing extras as if they are lifetimers because they are not. Don't be doing when you are knitting and if it's just for a season, same thing. You can't be treating them like they lifetimers. The way you develop and know that the people that come in and out of your life, even family, you got to be still and listen to God. Amen. But most importantly, I encourage y'all right now, even though the world is really, you know, times are hard. It really is. I got that. We ain't gonna keep on talking about this no more. Because we all right. I'm just gonna tell y'all. We all right know. Y'all probably heard me say, we all right now. We all right now. We ain't talking about this no more after this video. We all right now. So all we're gonna do is continue to pray. We're going to continue to support one another. We're going to continue to show the love of God. That's all God want us to do. Don't get in his way because he got it. He told me, oh, he got it. Oh, he, he, he see everything. He got it under control. He said he already know, but he's looking for, he's looking at our heart. He said, you tell him again, if I can trust them down here on earth with what they claim to have, that is everything. I'll give them anything. And then he said it in his word, if my people who are called by my name, because everybody not his people, I said that before. If my people who are called by my name will humble themselves, will pray and turn from, you know, will turn from their wicked ways and pray. He said, I'll hear from heaven and I'll heal the land real quick. But if you're not turning from your wicked ways, and if you haven't humbled yourself, and if you haven't prayed, he ain't doing nothing. His word said it, plain and simple, keeping it simple. Keep it simple, family. We got to keep it simple. But most importantly, love one another. Watch what you say. Stop talking so much. Some of y'all talk too much. You know, you, you magnify this. Be still. Trust God. Pray. Get behind your leaders. Take care of yourself. Take care of yourself, mind, body, and spirit. Take care of your family. Amen. And be honest. And take it one day at a time. One, whatever, whatever you're in, take it one day with God at a time. He know your pace. Stop trying to do everything at the same time. You know, stop trying to take care of everybody either. You do what God tell you to do. You let God tell you what to be involved in and what not to be involved in. Amen. And don't worry about what other people saying and what they doing and oh, what's this going on? And it, it, it. Nah, nah, nah. That's the distraction of the enemy to throw us off. Seek ye first the kingdom. That's all you need to be seeking is the kingdom. Stop getting so much involved in what's going on, getting it, letting it, you know, just throw you all off in the world. We all right now. He said it. Hey, he said this was going to happen. Stop letting it be a shocker. And I'm talking to the true believers. Now, as true believers, we can't be skittish itish, you know, about what all was going on. That was with thee. 
and for those that are coming up behind us and for those the people that are you know the new babes in christ it is our job just like a baby just like when we raise kids we have to raise them and the best way we raise them is to model the love of God and point them in the right direction. Give them the words. If God placed a word in you to speak a word, then that's what you do. You speak a word, you know. Don't be doing all that extras. You know what I'm saying? Stick to what God has called you to do. Keep it real simple. Amen. My heart goes out to the fence, to Charlottesville. Definitely goes out to the whole political. This government is all jacked up. But God got it under control. I believe he told me that and I trust him like that. It's whatever. It's all about him. He yeah, do me. <laughs> he got it, it got. It's none of my business because God got it. He said when he told me he got it, he said, you do what I told you to do. And I'm going to do what I know I'm going to do. I said, amen, Jesus. You ain't got to worry about I ain't got. I'm not going to tell you. I ain't getting any. I already I tried that years ago. You got it, and I trust you. But also, I want to share, and then I'm done. Um, you know, um, God laid it on my heart. He, I mean, because I, I, He's just such a good God, and I just really want those that have came into my life and my family. They know how much you know. I would love them. Uh to continue to strengthen their relationship with God. My core people, I'm always pushing them because I, you know, I I, I just love, I've seen him and I want y'all to get the fullness and enjoy him. He is so good. Even under all that is going on, I'm telling you, he is a wonderful, compassionate. He's a sweet and loving God. He makes it so simple. But we can make it so hard. The Bible, what he want us to do is very simple. It's very basic. He said, if you are in me, if you believe in me and my word is in you, meaning your heart, you believe my word. You believe me. You receive salvation. You are with me. God said, anything you ask, I will give it to you. And the only thing that we just have to keep in mind is that his time is not our time. Amen. So I encourage you, family, you know, we have to stick together on this. We have to stick together right now, more than ever. These times is rough. You have to, we, have, we have to stick together as well as you have to stick with and take care of your family. Take care of the ones that are coming up behind you and there because you got the goods and you have to pave the way. Amen. Our man, we need your, you know, my pastor spoke about that, but I believe that true. I mean, especially today, we need our men. You know, it's a doggy dog world out here and it's hard for a woman. It's hard for a single black woman. Amen. But with God, <laughs> you know, it could be, how can I say, it? help me, Holy Ghost. It's always better with God. But I'm going to trust him. And I do trust him. Because the people that are in my life and the people coming in, y'all are such, I mean, y'all bring me so much joy. And it really does. It really brings me joy to watch y'all lives. And when you really try in the word of God and then to see it work and to see your eyes light up and you really see and feel how much God loves you. I'm telling you, that's the best. I mean, nothing can compare to that. Love covers a multitude of sin. We got to stop fighting each other. Even in the body of Christ. I ain't even talking about the world. I'm, it's, I mean, it's a lot of gunk going on amongst believers. What's up with that? Why the believers? Even some of the leaders off the chain. Really? And we're serving the same God? Are you for real? We got to stop it too as believers. There's some believers. Oh, I, I mean, I'm like, you're, and this is how you're going to 
country. What? And we are family? Wow. So I encourage those too. You know, you need to go back. You need to go back and get back on your knees. And you need to be reminded of how good God is. Amen. And to those leaders, because yes, God said it's going to be some false prophets, all kinds of bull people just rising up, popping up, just hopping up out of here. Why you got to be a false prophet? Just do what God say. Be a real prophet. Especially if you got the gift. Because you already know what the end going to come. The Bible says it. I ain't saying it. The Bible says it. Fact check me. Get into your word. Amen. So I love y'all so much. I had a, you know, I'm coming back on. I'm not going to stay away from you guys too long. Just pray for me as I pray for you. Um, like I said, it's a little diff difficult for my family right now. And I'm trying to uplift everyone. And uh, But I trust God and I know that we're going to be okay. And I just love the people that he is connecting me with and I'm knitting with. And um, it's just a wonderful journey, regardless of all that's going on. I just choose to keep my eye on God. But most importantly, also, you have to watch what you say. Think before you say something. The word says, the one who guards his mouth. I said it. Our key scripture tonight was Proverbs 13, 3. The one who guards his mouth, thinking before he speaks, protects his life. The one who opens his lip wide and chatters without thinking, comes to ruin. You fall every time. Amen. You fall every time. So watch what you say. And what's the key? I told y'all the key thing to watch what you say. You better think about what you think about. Amen. Think about what you think about first before it come out here. And before it get, before, when the kid here, you need to think about what you think about before it get here. And then when, if it's here, you better shut, you better go in the prayer, get on your face. Dude, you don't let it come out here. Amen. Like I tell you. This thing is the most deadliest weapon on earth. It's like a gun. Once you pop it off, you can't pull that bullet back. You cannot pull that bullet back of words. Watch what you say. Even when you looking on the news and stuff, watch what you say. God is listening. Amen. And he's looking at the content of your heart. And sometimes being distracted and being so caught up can prolong your blessing and it can prolong you getting to your destination, you know, because you up here running off at the mouth and you done got off focus. You know, when you see something terrible, you pray. You pray and give it to God and you just got to turn your head. As hurtful as it is, give it to God and pray, family, because we're here only for us. We only here temporarily and we have a job to do. God is expecting you want a well done. You got to get on your job. Stop running off at your mouth so much. You know what I'm saying even on Facebook, stop running off at your mouth. We already know. Okay, we done saint it. Now we got to pray. And however opportunities come to assist these families, any charities or whatever, God lays it on your heart to be involved in, then that's what you do. You hit it and you keep it moving. We got stuff to do because God is, and this is just tall tale sign. He's on the way. God said he got scheduled time. Oh, we already know Jesus coming back. And it's like, to me, the hotter it gets, oh yeah, we, we getting real close. So, so people of God, don't be shy. You just get ready and get happy because Jesus coming back. I'm happy. I can't wait till he come back. Amen. You know. Because there's no more sickness, no more pain, no more sorrow when he comes there. So I'm, I'm happy, you know, and we're going to pray for uh, our nation. And you keep uplifting them and you keep supporting your leaders and you keep supporting your friends and your family and you keep encouraging them. And um, you keep focusing on the goals and the dreams, you know, because the enemy wants us. He distracts us to put all of that down, you know, step out on faith. You know, you know what's in you. What's taking you so long to let those gifts and those talents and those things that God placed in you to be birthed out? Stop letting procrastination. Stop letting depression. Stop letting other people. 
talk you out of what you know you are built to do. You are built to last, just like me. We are built to last. And as long as God is with us, then who can be against us? Amen. You got to get that. I want y'all to get that. If God is for you, who, why is you worrying about? Because your family or certain people don't understand. If God said it, then let it be so. Amen. Heavenly Father, I come to you tonight again. Thank you, Lord God. Thank you for reminding us of how important it is to watch what we say. Lord, we know that there is a lot going on because you said it in your word that these are the times that we will be facing. But Lord, right now with my social media family, we come right now, Lord God, lifting up to you all the political leaders, this whole government system, Lord God. We lift up to you the lost. We lift up all to you the unbelievers, Lord God. God, you have the whole world in your hand. You have every heart in your hand in the name of Jesus and you can turn it however you see fit. Lord, I just ask that you have mercy upon them, Lord God. And Lord, I ask that you open their eyes so they can see, Lord God, the wonderful things in your law in the name of Jesus. I ask that you turn the hearts and turn the minds of these leaders and make them make sound decisions, the right decisions, Lord God. For, the, for everyone, for all of us. And Lord, help them to understand that the decisions that they are in position to make not only affects everybody, it affects their family too, in the name of Jesus and everybody that is connected unto them. Lord God, I ask that you turn the hearts of the selfish leaders, Lord God, the ones that are just all about me, 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 and I, 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 Lord God, help them to see that everything that they do will impact somebody in the name of Jesus. Lord, I decree and declare that for your grace and your mercy over them, Lord God, help them, Lord God, to understand that it ain't about them. Because at the end of the day, it's all about you. Everything will be judged. You will get the final say. And what could they say in the presence of you? What could they say if you ask them, what have they done with the life, with the breath you've given them, with the opportunities, the giftings that you have put in them? And they didn't show you any gratitude for any of it in the name of Jesus. Lord, remind them that it will be a day that they will have to face you. But Lord, I help, I just ask you to have mercy. Have mercy upon us, Lord God. Forgive us for our sins. Forgive those political leaders and the president, Lord God. Forgive them even for the thoughts of sins in their mind in the name of Jesus. Forgive them and help them, Lord God. Help them to see the truth. Lord, prick their hearts and their minds. Burn in them, Lord God, the truth where they have no choice but to run from it. They can't run from it. Help them, Lord God, to not even run from the truth and to make sound decisions, Lord God, that will unify us, that will heal us, and, it, and we can allow you to heal the land. Lord, reveal yourself. Do a miracle. We need you, Lord God. We love you. We trust you. We really do, Lord God. We repent now, Lord God. Wash us and clean us up, Lord God. Forgive us for all the things that we have done against you, mind, body, and spirit in the name of Jesus. Lord God, help us from this day forward to be better. Help us to be excellent, effective representatives. Help us to love ourselves, Lord God, like you love us. Help us to see like you see. Help us to, to speak like you speak, Lord God. Help us to do and follow your example, Lord God. Help us to love and to stay with one another. Lord, we give you all the glory and the honor now. And we thank you in advance for all that you've done, all that you continue to do, all that you will do. And we're going to continue to keep you first. And we're going to continue to watch what we say in Jesus' name. Amen, amen. It has been wonderful. And guess what? Now I see the dingies. I see the dingies. 
I see the thingies. Hi, Jerome. Hi, Jessica. Oh, 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 Alinda is on. Hi, Miss Della. Oh, I see the dingies. Oh, Miss Fanny is on. Y'all, y'all know I couldn't wait. God said I could. I God just ah. Oh, you Miss Yvonne is on. Ah, Mr. Andrew is on. Hi, y'all. Oh, 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 Miss Montella is on. Hi, Robin. Oh my goodness. Hi, Nisha. Oh my goodness. Y'all just know the dingies. I get to see the. See, that just sets me up. God knows. Y'all just blesses my heart. He's a good God. I'm telling you, thank y'all for all y'all support. I see the dangies. <laughs> this is just does my heart good. And um, I thank y'all for always encouraging me. And I thank and I hope and pray that I'm always a, an encouragement to you. And um, we are in this together. I see the dangies. I'm in, I'm off for see. That's enough, right? That's enough for me. I see the dangies. I, I see the dangies. I tell you, I love y'all with the love of Christ. It is wonderful. God is a wonderful God. He has some wonderful, beautiful people. He do. And you know, I know it's rough family. I know it is rough, but you know what? We're going to be all right. Trust me, we're going to be all right. And I just encourage y'all to live, love, laugh, and be happy. I See, now I'm going to keep y'all for a bit. I see the dangies. I see the dangies. And y'all know how the enemy is when I bind him up in the name of Jesus. But I will be back on, um, I'm not going to stay away. I, I, I am y'all. Pray for me, though. Pray for me. Because I have so much uh, in me. And we just working it out. And, um, but also with my personal schedule, God, I keep that real. Um, and I'm just a very, all right, let me stop all real quick. I'm going to be transparent so I can tell you. You know, I'm just a very, um, sometimes I could be very perfectionist and picky, you know, especially over the people, um that I really care about and I care about my social media family. I really do care about your opinions. I care about what I see you post. And if I see something that, you know, cause the Bible says the word is, I will correct. It is for correction and instruction and rebuke, you know, and I will always do it in love and everything that, um, you know, I've entered, you know, whomever in my life, they know that I do it in love. Even if we, you know, sometimes rub up against each other because iron does sharpens iron. And even when I like, you know, my girlfriend, you know, it, sometimes it ain't always lovely. You know, she tell me some things like I could be long winded like that. So I know I'm here from her, but she know my excitement and I love her. But, <laughs> but, uh, you know, it's, um, it really, you know, I really do appreciate and I can't do this without you. I'm, I'm not going, I, I can't do it without God and I can't do it without you because God loves you and I love you and I love what God loves because he is just a good God. And he, you know, in my life, what he has done and the things, even when I think back in the past of the places I've been and the things that he's gotten me out of, and it's not even so much of, uh, all the bad stuff i mean the good things i mean you know i may not be where i want to be but i'm sure enough ain't where i used to be you know amen and the same for you and sometimes we have to remind ourselves of that we have to talk to ourselves you know and um be reminded so don't let you know uh what's going on distract you keep your eye on god Amen. He wants us to enjoy ourselves. He wants us to be happy with one another. I love y'all. Y'all make me happy for real. I mean, it's the little things. And see, God says it. If I can, I mean, if you bless him with the little things and let him continue to work, then you'll be able to hold the big things. Amen. You know, and because some people, they ask for things and God, you know, sometimes I'll, I'll, I'll say this. Sometimes we pray for stuff that for real is not. And, and you may think that God is saying no or, you know, he may tell you no or not right now or whatever. It's not that uh, he doesn't want you to have it. But if you think about it, spirit, you're not spiritually mature enough to handle it. Amen. 
some people they praying for a bunch of money okay yeah technically we all can use that let's keep that 100 but some you know all of us god has had god told me he all had no problem with none of us being worldly rich because really that's world i mean because we're already rich we're kings and queens we're royalty but to, to have worldly possessions he ain't got no problem with that the problem is when we continue to go after our goals and we forget that god is with us that's the that's where the problem come in there. and then we can get the big head and as soon as you get a little bit of, you know, you can get a little promotion or you can get a, you know, whatever you're in your career. You get a little bit of elevation in the world stuff. You forget about God. You don't pray like you used to. You don't even talk to him because now you don't got a little bit of extra money or a little bit of extra celebrity status or something. Or, you know, you got a little bit of limelight and now all of a sudden you don't forgot about God. And so a lot of times he not going to give you all the time at that specific time. And it's not that he doesn't want you to have it. He wants you to be much spiritually mature to handle it. So see, once you come to full maturity, then once he blesses you, then guess what? It's like him saying he trusts you. He's saying, now I can trust you because I can trust you at that level now I'm with it. And the only way you won't lose it is either you allow the devil to take it away for as allowing, um, letting the devil make you put it down or you give it away. Amen. So I love y'all. I see the dangies. I am excited. Y'all is on here with me. I love y'all so much. I tell you. Oh, Jessica, I'm telling y'all the dangies, the dangies. Y'all know I was fighting with this this technology for so long and I'm telling you, I was feeling the kind of way. Now I got me a new phone and stuff and I get to see my social media family. I see the dangies and I'm excited. Amen. But I love y'all so much. Love y'all. Um, and um, I just pray for you and your families. Y'all have a wonderful and blessed night. And keep me in prayer, cause y'all, I just, I'm just trying to, you know, whew, I'm just trying to will it in. But I will be back on soon. I'm not gonna stay away from y'all too long. Just pray that I just keep some, you know, order. And I'm trying to stay calm. And yes, I have my struggles, and um, I'm gonna work out uh, some things. But I am working on some things that I'll be sharing. And I'm going to need y'all support on amen. I am nervous. I'm human. I'm nervous about it because, you know, within what my goals are and what God is preparing me, I just want to make sure that I, whatever God uses me and how I serve his people, I will always serve in excellency. You know, always want to be an excellent, effective representative of God. And I pray that over all of you, you know, I ain't, you know, it's whatever God wants because it's all about him. Amen. I love y'all. I can keep y'all on here. You know I can go. I see the dingies. I see the dingies. Y'all are so awesome. Thank you. Thank you. I love my social media family. Ah, I love y'all so much. God bless y'all. And I know some of you I will be talking to you and all this good stuff because y'all got a lot of good stuff going on. And we're going to just continue to war in the spirit. And we're going to continue to pray for our country and we're going to pray for those coming behind we're going to continue to just stand in the gap and just to be all what god called us to be i encourage you that amen you know i need you i love y'all god loves you more don't let go of his hand yeah don't don't leave him out because he up to something big and he's he's going to bless his people he got something good for us trust me it's coming down the pike you just hold on no matter what season you in i love y'all <laughs> I love y'all. I love y'all so much. And I will be talking with y'all soon. God bless y'all. Have a blessed and wonderful night.